I'd like to welcome everyone to this um, now third um, online webinar that uh, is was started about four or five weeks ago. Um, this is the Connect to Culture webinar. And what we're trying to do is to highlight the online efforts of some of our cultural partners. Um, so today we have um, a wonderful guest, but before I get to our guest, I'd like to actually um, talk a little bit about this webinar in general. Um, this is a webinar that happens every other Monday at 1 p.m., 1 to 1.30. Uh, I'll invite a guest speaker from one of our cultural community to speak uh, about their efforts online um, to give you as caregivers a sense of what resources are out there. Um, there are many, many resources either in development um, or already active and online um, being actively used. So we want caregivers to really take advantage of these efforts. Um, I know the cultural institutions that are doing this are very dedicated um, to create it, creating uh, this virtual world for you. Uh, before we get to the actual presentation, there are just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, all of these webinars, uh, this and the ones going forward, are going to be video and audio recorded. Um, if you prefer not to be video or audio recorded, then you're more than welcome to uh, deactivate your camera. Um, we will be putting the recording of all of these webinars up on the, the Connect to Culture webpage, and I can send that link out to you, or you can reach it through the Caring Kind uh, website. It will also be on our YouTube channel, um, and I can give you that, uh, that information in the chat later on. Um, all of your mics, uh, except for me and the guest speaker, will be muted throughout the presentation so we can cut down on any ambient noise. Um, if you would like to ask a question either during the presentation or um, during our Q&A at the end of the session, please feel free to, to enter it in the chat window and uh, we'll go through it when the time comes to address any of the questions you have. Um, so going forward, we have actually a, a webinar on the 18th, I believe, um, from Lincoln Center. So I hope all of you will join us then. Um, uh, and the process is the same. Just give our helpline a call at 646-744-2900 and we'd, we'd be uh, happy to have you back. Um, so let's kind of jump into this. Um, I'm very happy to have Carolyn Helpin Healy, a longtime um, colleague in the cultural world. Um, to talk about uh, her role as ex executive director of Arts and Minds and also her um, or their initiative, I should say, with Arts and Minds at Home. Um, so I will pass the baton to you, Carolyn. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Meredith. And thanks so much for organizing this and to Caring Kind for being such an amazing cult, uh, partner, especially through the Connect to Culture effort. Um, right now I'm seeing three participants with us. I'm seeing Grace, Jody, and Anne. Um, hello, hi everybody. Are there others in the waiting room, Meredith? You might want to take a moment I, to enter. I just let a few, few more people in. Okay, great. All right. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm so glad to be here to tell you about our, our new effort, which we're calling Arts and Minds at Home. Um, and uh, in this first slide, I'm just sharing with you a few images of our programs in action. And I particularly love the one on the right where uh, it re we really are in the living room of our participants. Um, and there we are on the screen uh, in front of their fireplace on their stack of books. And next to their, their still life of a living plant and a beautiful blue vase, as well as a sort of a china shaped vase. Um, so it's, it's, it's been quite fun uh, to meet with people in this way. Those of you who are familiar with Arts and Minds know, and those of you who are not perhaps might like to know that we started in 2010 uh, with the mission to improve life for people with dementia and their care partners through engagement with art in museums. And since 2010, we have partnered with the Studio Museum in Harlem from 2012 with the New York Historical Society. In 2015, we started with El Museo del Barrio and we were the first program of its kind to operate in Spanish and our, our Arts and Minds in Espanol is still going strong. Um, and our partners also include the Museum of the City of New York, the Jewish Museum, 
and the Metropolitan Museum of Art, all places that we're all now missing terribly during this period of COVID-19 and the closure of our museum partners. Um, and March 13th was the day the Met closed and many other museums joined suit. And we, but that was also the day that Arts and Minds at Home offered its first online program. Um, we began to cancel our in-person programs on March 6th. My, my partner and co-founder, Dr. Jamie Noble, is a neuroepidemiologist. That is, he's a neurologist and he has training in epidemiology. Um, and so he really had his eye on um, the COVID-19 epidemic and how that was advancing. And since our participants are mostly older adults, that is people over the age of 60, um, and many of them, of course, have um, other pre-existing conditions. They are people who are particularly vulnerable. And so we stopped offering our programs in person as early as March 6th. And by March 13th, we were up and running. Um, and I'm really proud of my team for having been able to do that because central to our mission is the promise to accompany our participants through dementia. And so for those who were already attending with us, we weren't gonna leave people high and dry. We were gonna find a way to meet them and continue to support them. So now we're all in this new medium and everyone we know is doing everything via teleconference, um, whether it's on Zoom or Google Hangouts or the other platforms. This is how these programs are happening. Um, and there we see one of our, our, our beloved participants, Gloria, at home at her kitchen table um, with the view out her window with Arts and Minds propped up there on her kitchen table. So we've already managed to do 15 programs. So this is an, this is an ongoing effort. We'll, we see this continuing indefinitely. Um, and so if you or someone you know have people you'd like to recommend to our programs, we would love to have them join us. And I'll talk a little bit about why, how, you know, how is Arts and Minds at Home the same as Arts and Minds in a museum space? Um, and our pro I'll, I'll just say that our programs are based on the idea of person-centered care and this, this sort of floral motif that I, that I borrow here from the work of Tom Kitwood, the, who's really the architect of person-centered care for dementia. Um, and I sort of, my theoretical foundation kind of does a mashup with Tom Kitwood. So um, we invite people, I'll tell you how the, in the programs we can meet these needs. So everyone has a need for inclusion and we meet that need by warmly inviting people to our programs. Um, the, we're engaged in a worthwhile activity, looking at understanding and exchanging ideas about art. Um, so we meet the need for a meaningful occupation. You respond to a work of art the way you do because you are who you are. So identity is always in play. We've always paid attention to comfort. Comfort in the art museum um, isn't always easy to come by. Museums can be crowded, they can be noisy, they can be chilly. Um, maybe Arts and Minds at Home is a, is a way to, to meet the need for comfort. Um, maybe that's made a little bit more easy under these otherwise challenging circumstances. Um, and we meet the need for attachment. That is to say that um, Old attachments may perhaps be strengthened, and you can see that in this beautiful image of uh, CJ and Joseph. And new attachments are formed, even now across Zoom. Um, attachments become very strong between the facilitators, um, between participants and one another. And the way we do this is to keep love at the center. The programs spring from love, when we're really lucky, love grows from these programs. And um, we do that by keeping art at the center. So it's very much an act of solidarity between museums, 
arts and minds and our participants. So that's, this may be sort of the secret sauce of arts and minds. Um, and it's something I think we can all keep in mind um, in whatever way we engage with people with dementia. Um, if you were to come to Arts and Minds at home, that is, if you were to sign in as you are right now to this Zoom meeting with Caring Kind, if you were to sign in with our Zoom meeting, we're presenting participants with uh, a schedule. So for the program, which is lasting anywhere between an hour and an hour and 20 minutes or so, depending on the size of the group and the, um, you know, if the group is larger, it takes more time for the exchanges to happen. So a smaller group, the program may be an hour long. With a larger group, it may be more like an hour and a quarter. Um, so we share a, a schedule that looks exactly like this. This is today's schedule, in fact, um, where we'll give people some Zoom tips at the top of the, of the hour, as Meredith just did. We'll, um, but we, we rely less on the technology and we do more with sort of um, gestures. So if you, for example, if you are in a program and you had a question, I'd ask you to raise your hand. Um, and if someone makes a point that you agree with or want to support, you might give a thumbs up um, to show agreement. So this way we're not asking people with cognitive impairment to learn sort of fussy little details about this electronic medium, but instead to go with what they know, hand raising, thumbs up, clear ways to express what ourselves. We might begin with a warm up activity. Um, and so that could be a, a breathing exercise. I, we, we may just invite you to place your feet firmly on the floor. In fact, this might be a good thing for all of us to do now. Um, if your day has started with as much tech as mine has, um, it, this might be a good moment to take a deep breath in and raise your arms and let it out. Take a second deep breath in, allow it to fill your lungs and let it out slowly. You may like to close your eyes as you take this third deep breath in and let it out slowly and allow your hands to find a comfortable position and join us here. And we can begin by looking at a work of art. And since we are such a small group, why don't I ask you, tell me what you see. What do you see in this image? I'm gonna unmute everyone. So if anyone would like to add their comments, feel free. Anyone, Jody? what do you see? I see a very colorful bed uh, with a very cool sun shaped object by the uh, headboard side. I'm talking about this. Appears to have yes. the rays of the sun radiating outward. Yes. Very brightly colored, you say. Very cool, you said. Yeah, very, um, very colorful. Very, um, I want to, it makes me want to see closer. Yeah. yeah. So if this were a real program, and when we did this as a real program, we had details, and I could show you the, the close-ups. And that's exactly how it would go. People would share their observations, exchange ideas. You can see that within this sun, which is sort of the first thing people notice, e even, even with all of this detail and all this bright color, they tend to go right for this sort of uh, solar shaped picture frame that has a, a, a portrait photograph in the center. Um, and this is a work from our, our partner, partner El Museo del Barrio. Uh, their collection, it's by a uh, Puerto Rican American artist called Pepono Sorio, La Cama, simply called The Bed. Um, and so this conversation, exchange of observations, 
would move on to interpretations. And so our participants notice things um, like little figures down here. There are some little Ken doll type figures here. There are many things stuck on to the bedpost, including a heart here with some doves, almost as if from the top of a wedding cake. Um, on the bedspread are these ribbons that are these commemorative ribbons that are often given out at birthdays, christenings, and other kinds of celebrations. And the artist has affixed mm -hmm. those to the bedspread. Um, so there are all kinds of interpretations that come out of noticing all of these details. But it's essentially an accumulation of objects that have meaning that are then affixed to this bed, which becomes its own you know, quite extraordinary work of art. This conversation and exchange of ideas goes on for about 15 or 20 minutes, depending on how engaged people are with the object, and they're usually pretty engaged. Um, and then we would trans uh, sort of shift to um, a question about that would inspire art making. Um, and the question here was, what object or objects make you think of home? And so this was a very early program. This was in the second week of Arts and Minds at Home. Um, we didn't, you know, people, we weren't there supplying art supplies for people. So they had to work with what they had. Um, and this was kind of perfect. What object or objects make you think of home? And many people brought things from their immediate environment, family photographs um, and other kinds of things. And in this photo, you see our participants um, this is a father-daughter team, and they are across, um, they're, they're not in the same home. They're in different places. And here, um, Carmen has sort of made the Venezuelan flag here in a heart shape. This sort of crescent of stars is characteristic of the Venezuelan flag. And her, uh, and, and over here, um, our participant is holding up what I think is a little keychain with a map of Venezuela. So they had this nice sort of warm engagement um, about their home, Venezuela, that they both live in New York now. So that was a really fun, oh, and you see, here's the photograph. Here's the photograph that he brought to the program. That was quite fun. Um, so that's kind of how the programs go. And we're maintaining our partnerships with other museums. So I'm just putting in a plug here for JM Journeys, um, where Meredith used to work. And Meredith was actually the, the, really one of the founders of JM Journeys. And on May 20th, Arts and Minds is partnering with the Jewish Museum to do JM Journeys um, on, online. And so we'll, we'll have an 11, an 11 a.m. program specifically for people with early stage dementia and uh, at uh, two o'clock for people with more advanced symptoms. Um, here is Team Arts and Minds. When, if you are to join a program, these are the facilitators whom you will meet who give a wonderful program. Um, everybody is trained to work with people with dementia. Um, most of us have years of experience um, and so um, the team is quite skilled in meeting the needs of those with dementia and also of the caregivers, um, whom of course are, are living in a state of increased isolation, which is ever more challenging. Um, I meant to share with you a slide of my MET participants. These are upcoming Arts and Minds programs. Um, there's one tomorrow at 2 p.m. and I believe there are still some openings available if you'd like to join. Thursday, May 7th, Arts and Minds en Espanol, also at two o'clock. And Friday, May 8th, we're doing a discussion only program. Um, so there will not be an art making component to that, that particular one. Um, and to make reservations, you can call 646-755-3726. You will receive, uh, you'll, you'll leave a message for Nelly Escalante who will return your call. Um, and you can also uh, find her email at artsandminds.org and make your reservation there. I'm looking for another slide that um, 
a little trouble backing up though, which should be out here. Here are my, my uh, our colleagues at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I promised um, I would share their upcoming programs. So they've started a Met Memory Cafe, um, which they're doing virtually online in this similar format. And that program is next week, May 13th, from two to three. And on May 27th, there is a Metascapes program. Our Arts and Minds program this week, Arts and Minds en Español, um, is, is actually focused on the collection of El Museo del Barrio, but in two weeks time, it will be um, with the Metropolitan Museum of Art collection. So it's been really gratifying that these partnerships um, are really surviving even as the, the physical spaces have closed. So we're, we're managing to hold it together and really wanting to do so, so that as many people as would like to be involved can be involved in such a program. So just sharing here with you a final image from one of our programs. Um, <laughs> Flip the Bird came to mind. We were, <laughs> we were talking about hands and during these, you know, everybody's washing their hands a lot. There's a lot to be talked about, about what hands can can communicate. So I want to hold your hand, but you can also flip the bird. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy to answer any questions you might have and um, hope that I'll see you and the people you care for at an upcoming program. Great. So I've actually unmuted everyone. So if you if you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so. You can either enter it in the chat window or just ask it uh, to your mic. Carolyn, this is Anne, and I just wondered um, how you're managing the art making activities at home. Are do people have supplies, or are you keeping it simple to drawing on pieces of paper? What? Yeah, we're keep, right now we're keeping it super simple um, okay. and it is mostly drawing, though some people have watercolors and they break those out. Other people have, their people have quite a variety of drawing okay. implements. They may have colored markers, they may have um, pencils or pens of various types. Um, but some people have brought in on their own kind of collage elements. So oh, it kind of depends great. on the household. Okay. And we're going to be sending to all of our participants some recommended supplies. So we're going to send links from Blick so that if people are inclined and they want to purchase supplies, they'll, they'll know which ones we recommend. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Carolyn, this is Meredith. Uh, I have a question in the chat room. Um, can participants who do not live in NYC participate? Are there fees from participating museums? E.g. the Met? Um, there are no fees. No, Arts and Minds programs are free. The, the partner programs that I mentioned are also free to everyone. Um, and uh, people who do not live in New York City are welcome to participate, yes. It's the great thing about these virtual programs is that if word spreads beyond the borders of New York City, of course, people are welcome. We want to kind of support and serve people all around, um, all around the states and beyond. Um, the other good thing, which Carolyn just mentioned, was that there are no admission fees from the museums either. So for any of these in-person programs, um, you would register through, uh, through Arts and Minds or through whichever program you're coming to uh, and there would be no additional fees. So you just need to register and show up and um, be ready to be engaged. Uh, Go ahead. Um, I just um, was wondering how you and some of the museum um, uh, facilitators have been uh, using Zoom when you're doing a verbal discussion and could you recommend any helpful tools or tips or things you've learned along the way as I've been also doing a lot of the virtual programming. Yeah, so, you know, well, what we're learning is that, you know, the face-to-face -face kind of thing is still really important, um, which is why we're doing, we're raising hands like this and we're agreeing like this. Um, that's part of that. Um, our pacing is slow as it normally is. 
and we're giving people tips at the beginning. Um, we're asking people, and in fact, I think we're going to do something. We're, we're doing sort of phone calls on the side with people to, to help them with anything they might need to get online. And so oftentimes people just need to be, to be told that there's a gal, they can use a gallery view or they can, um, I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen so that I can see you better. Um, they, they uh, so right now I, I'm in a gallery view where I have sort of four screens. Everybody looks sort of equal on here. There are other views. So for example, Jody, you, you, can, you can pin me or we've been using Spotlight a lot because we don't want the participants to have to be preoccupied with this, but um, I'm sort of controlling this video right now. So um, let's see, I want to be, a, I, so I, I can decide to spotlight Meredith. So if Meredith was showing us something, she would be larger. Uh, on the screen, and that's sort of helpful for people. Um, I can also sort of switch it, and I can spotlight you when you're showing us what you've just made. So th the spotlight thing is turning out to be pretty helpful. That's a helpful tip. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. but it's really learn as you go. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, I've been learning as I go too, but I, I like that tip. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I can actually also say um, I attended the Metascapes uh, program that they did online a couple of weeks ago, and they send out a tip sheet to their attendees. Um, I don't have one with me or else I would, I would get that to you, but I can see if someone can send it to you. But I think that, that helps to have it written because sometimes you know, verbally they're just trying to deal with the new technology. Um, it's a lot to learn in five minutes. So it is a lot um, to learn. <laughs> good to have a tip sheet. Yeah, um, that would be great. Um, I have one question from Lucy. Um, she's not sure whether this pr the Arts and Minds program is for just caregivers or for both people with dementia and their caregivers. Lucy, it's for people with dementia and their caregivers. So most of the time we'll have two people on a screen. Today, I, I think we're talking mostly among caregivers. Um, and so we've got just a single person on a screen, but during any program, we've it's almost always two people in a household and I, so it's the sorry I, my video is not working that's okay, Lucy. can you hear me it's people with i can i, I can and hear you part. you thank you yeah the and other I thing wish, is, sorry go wish, ahead Lucy. sorry <laughs> i wish my mom were here um she's actually we did move her into memory care uh, last year but um i thought maybe i could even you know if i can bring a tablet or a laptop with me when I can visit her next, um, we could do something together. You can definitely do that and that's a great idea. I don't know if it's possible for you now, but some of our participants and their caregivers who are separated because of this COVID-19 issue right now are joining separately. So we've got oh. one, we've got one family who just join from um, we've got a couple of people in Queens, and we've you got, hear it? <laughs> we've got people well, I, in Queens, and we've got the, the, the so the, the mother and her son-in-law join from Queens, the daughter joins from her apartment in Manhattan, and then there's another member of the family who joins from Venezuela. Wow. So that's, there's that's, like a reunion on Arts and Minds at Home, which is quite fun. And then yeah. there's another more local situation where the professional companion caregiver has stopped coming to the home because of the, you know, the danger of exposure. She has a long subway ride. Um, right. And so sh sh uh, the, the participant who's living at home with his wife, um, who's working at home, she sets him up um, in front of the, in, with the computer and um, the, 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 the prof and then she goes back to work and the professional caregiver joins from her apartment in Brooklyn. So that, that's another really nice way for it to work. Okay. Now, at, the, at the nursing homes, um, I have a friend who's a music therapist at a nursing home in Westchester, and they have staff who walk around with iPads. So if they know that there's a relative who wants to, to have a face-to-face -face talk with 
the resident, their parent or whoever it might be at the nursing home, then they will make sure to bring that iPad into that room and make it available. So if you wanted to, maybe there's some way to schedule a time when Arts and Minds has their online, um, online program and then you can make sure to be there with your mom uh, on, online. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. That's a great idea, Merida. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the social worker, maybe the caseworker, yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or someone who works closely with your mom would be willing to do that. And it would be, it would be actually great for the mission of all of us about uh, <laughs> caregivers and caregiver health if there were actually someone who participates in your mother's care who could be there side by side with her while you're kind of zooming in from, from where you live. That, that would be is lovely. <laughs> <They're even laughs> lovely. It's a lot of coordination, but I think it's it it will be well worth it um, if you can get all the all your ducks in a row, so to speak. Um, it's a little after one thirty. I want to be respective, uh, respectful of everyone's time. Um, I hate to cut this short. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to you can email me um, at m wong. I'm going to put this in the chat um, at cknyc.org. If you have questions you'd like to pose to Carolyn as well. Um, I'm sure we can, I can, uh, whoops, I just sent that privately. Um, but I know that Carolyn was interested, if any of you are, are willing to stay on for a couple more minutes, Carolyn was um, wanting, wanting to ask a follow-up question before we close this session. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's anything that you would particularly like to see as these programs are, are moving online. Is there anything that's missing right now that we should be considering? And if nothing comes immediately to mind, um, do let me know. And, you know, it's, it's a very dynamic process, isn't it? How we're all figuring out how to navigate this. What are the new ways in which we'll be able to support individuals with dementia and their care partners? Um, so if, if, if people have suggestions, desires, thoughts, please do make them known. And I know Meredith will share them with me. Of course, of course. So this I'll just thank you for um, organizing this, this webinar. It's a great opportunity to connect with people and to let everybody know about what we're doing at Arts and Minds at Home. Great, well, thank you so much, Carolyn, for your wonderful presentation and all of your feedback and anecdotal stories um, that really kind of tell tell the story of the people of the lives, the lives of the people we're uh, impacting and hopefully supporting. Um, so I want to thank everyone for joining us, uh, all the caregivers and professionals that have joined us. Um, I also want to kind of do a shout out for the upcoming um, webinar in two weeks on the 18th, I believe, uh, with Lincoln Center. And then we're gonna do a special, um, a special, I think it, it'll be a little bit of a performance, a little bit of narrative with, um, Orpheus Chamber Orchestra for um, the 25th will be, which will be Memorial Day. So I hope everyone will join us for that. Um, and again, thank you so much for all of the work that you do. And I hope to cross paths with everyone soon. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank, thank you, you, Meredith. Thank, thank you so much. Everyone. Nice to see everyone. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Thanks for being Bye. here. Bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye, Anne. Bye. <laughs>